We all know that iPhone cameras are pretty awesome these days, certainly better than built-in cameras on the, uh, the Mac, so wouldn't it be great if we could access all of that power from our iPhones uh, and bring it as a camera source into our Mac? Well, there's a really easy way you can do that with an application called Camo by Reincubate, and that is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Camo from Reincubate, which uh, is just a little app that you install on your phone, an app that you install on your Mac, link them together, and there we go. It gives you full access to all of the power of your iPhone's built in camera uh, and just presents it as a new camera that you can use on your Mac. Now this is great if you are a heavy zoom user and you want a, uh, to upgrade basically your image quality, uh, you can do it effortlessly using Camo. It's also great because it means that if you are mobile, uh, then you've generally, I would guess, got your <laughs> mobile phone with you. Uh, and so it means that you've got this thing with you in your pocket and you can instantly get this great image quality, plug it into your MacBook and you're good to go. It's also great if you want to actually just use it for your YouTube videos or something like that, or maybe add a second camera angle to you, your YouTube studio. That's what I'm using it for actually. I've got a, a top-down camera which is an old iPhone XS that I had lying around and now it has been put to better use <laughs> instead of in the landfill or the recycling wherever it might go uh, to uh, basically give me a top-down shot. Uh, and previously I was using a Logitech webcam and I can tell you the image quality is far better than I was getting from that. So uh, the same would be true if you are using uh, your Max built-in camera or maybe a, an external Logitech camera, something like that, you will get a much better image quality from uh, Camo using your iPhone's quality. Uh built-in camera, especially if you've got one of the newer models. So uh, that's what we're talking about today. So let's dig in and have a look at it. Uh, there's not much to show you about the interface on the iPhone. You just go and download it. I'll show you where to download it in shortly. And then I'll also put a link in the description. Uh, but you simply just download it, you open it up, and that's all there is to it. There's no settings or anything like that on the phone itself. Uh, you just then need to download the software for the Mac uh, and then plug your phone into the Mac using a uh, cable uh, and it will uh, just appear here there as a an option for you to choose so uh, probably easy if I just actually show you how this works in practice so I've got camo open on my desktop on my Mac uh, and here we go it's just the uh, the basic uh, interface is like this I've got the uh, picture that I'm getting so as you can see this is my top-down camera from my iPhone 5 XS uh, and then over on this side we've basically in the top We've got this little uh, icon here which pops out this little side panel. Now, if you are using the free version, there are, if, there are a few limitations, but I'll explain those as we go along. So first of all, uh, we've got a few different menus. In fact, let me just collapse some of these so that we can go through them one by one. Uh, so we've got a camera settings menu. If I click on that one, then we can choose the device. So I've only got one plugged in at the moment, but you can plug in multiple different phones. Uh, so you can choose which one you want. It's telling me the battery level there. Uh, then you've got the, uh, the mode. Now, this is, as I mentioned, an iPhone 5 XS. So it's quite an old phone. Uh, but if you were using one of the newer phones, then you would have access to things like portrait mode. So uh, you would be able to select that if you so wished. Next is the uh, lens. I've only got the choice of two here, obviously, because I've got basically a front-facing lens and the back-facing lens, the selfie lens. Uh, or is it the other way around? I never know which quite, which is supposed to be the front and back. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so that's uh, that's that. And then we've also got the focus. Now, at the moment, it's set to auto, but you can actually do a manual focus. So if you are going to have this fixed in one place, looking at a specific spot, then you can actually do a manual focus. So you can see that as I move the slider, it is adjusting the focus of the uh, the shot, so you could actually just get that exactly as you want it. Uh, because obviously, if you're on manual focus and something comes into shot, then it will focus on that instead. <laughs> and incidentally, the focus on these is pretty quick, considering, as I say, it's just a phone camera. If I move something into shot, you can see it focuses on that and moves back. Certainly a hell of a lot better than the Logitech camera that I was using before, which simply, actually, it just wouldn't focus at that, uh, that range because that's not what it's made to do. So uh, then you've got the uh, resolution, so you can change the uh, resolution, uh, obviously up to whatever the maximum is of the uh, particular camera. So if you're using one of the later models, then you'll probably be able to go up higher than 1080p. Uh, and then also you have the audio mode. Now uh, there's basically two choices here: either the uh, uh, the main camera, the, sorry, the main camera 
microphone, or you've also got the bottom uh, microphone, the one that you use for voice. Uh, and then obviously you might want to use a separate <laughs> microphone if you're using this for Zoom or things like that. Wouldn't necessarily recommend this uh, for that, but uh, there you go. At least you do have that choice. Next, you've got some uh, a presets menu. So if I click in here, there is some uh, presets. Uh, now I've already got one here for iPhone 5XS because I've actually created my own preset, but there is some uh, other ones here that are for different uh, presets in terms of the image quality. So if I come down here, you can see it's changed that. <laughs> They're all a bit uh, gimmicky really, to be honest. Uh, the real power of this, I think, comes from actually creating your own presets uh, and just sort of tweaking the image a little bit. So I'll just come back to that one for the moment. Next, you've got uh, image transformations. Uh, and so you can mirror your image like this. And then also you can add a watermark or take it off. Now, if you are on the free version, uh, it will have this uh, camo watermark there and that will be there permanently. You won't be able to take that off. But if you have upgraded to the pro version, uh, then you will be able to remove that watermark or if you wished, you can add your own watermark there as well. Next, we've got rotation. Uh, so uh, if depending on how you've got your camera mounted, you may find that you need to rotate it to uh, <laughs> orientate it in the correct way. Uh, and then down here, you've got a zoom as well. And if you zoom in, uh, then also you've got this window down just below and you can just click and drag this to actually position it exactly where you want it. So uh, great if you've got the camera on a tripod or something like that and you just want to uh, uh, crop into a certain area, then you will be able to sort of adjust the positioning of it that way. So that is uh, pretty much all, apart from that uh, one that I mentioned about the uh, the watermark, that is uh, all going to be available in the uh, the free version. However, there is a pro version, as I mentioned, uh, and with the pro version, you also uh, get this menu, or you get this menu with the other one, but you can actually change it. <laughs> so you can do some adjustments. So for example, you can change the exposure settings, so shutter speed and ISO, uh, and then you've also got the uh, white balance, so you can change the uh, the color temperature, and it does actually tell you what the temperature there is in Kelvin uh, and it tells you these different settings here as well. Uh, and then also the uh, the tint, so you can change the tint. And then also here the flash level. Now, if you toggle that one on, basically what that does is it actually turns on the uh, flash. So it's actually switched on the flash. You perhaps can't see it here, but there we go. It's actually turned on the light underneath as part of the uh, the camera flash. Uh, and then you can turn up that to turn up the intensity of that uh, that light. So that is now basically turning up the uh, the level of the light. So that's what that one is. If you want to have the use the uh, built in flash uh, to uh, to illuminate whatever it is you're uh, filming. <laughs> Next down here, we've also got other image adjustments. So we can adjust the usual suspects, <laughs> brightness, hue, saturation, contrast, gamma, sharpness. Uh, and so just obviously toggle those ones on and then you can play with those to your heart's content. Uh, and then once you've got all of those things set up, uh, you can come over to your presets. And uh, if you're in the pro version, then you can save that as a preset. So create new preset uh, and then just give it a name. Uh, and then that will then appear in your list. So that's a great way if you've got different setups or you're using it in different settings or different different ways, then you can just create presets for the, all of the uh, different adjustments that you want to make and then come in and select those as you wish. Uh, once you've uh, done all of this, uh, basically this just shows up then as a source. So if you go into Zoom, it will just appear there as a camera and it will be labeled as Camo by Reincubate. Uh, so you can just basically go and select that as your source then. I'm using this with Ecamm Live and so I've got it as my top-down camera. So if I come to my top-down shot, uh, I've used Ecamm to actually crop in slightly uh, to it, but basically this is now just, uh, uh, yeah, just the shot straight out of it. So it is a lot better than what I had previously been getting from my uh, Logitech webcam, as I just showed you the sort of speed of the focus is much better than I was getting on that. Uh, the difference in uh, sort of image quality is uh, is, <laughs> is certainly certainly clear to me as well. Uh, and it's just works much better for me for a uh, top down camera. I definitely will use it as well. Like if I'm out on the road or something like that and don't have my uh, equipment with me, uh, if I'm doing zoom calls or things like that, it's definitely one up on the, uh, the built in Mac cameras. So uh, that's what I wanted to tell you about today. But let me before I go, just actually tell you where to get it from as well. Uh, but before I do that, if you have found this useful at all, don't forget to go down and hit the like button. It really does uh, show me that uh, what I'm doing is having some sort of impact. <laughs> and if you found it extra useful, uh, then you can always go and find my uh, Buy Me Coffee page at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. Uh, so 
Also, if I just come over to my uh, screen sharing now, I'll just show you this before I uh, sign off because this is obviously the crucial part where to get it from. It's reincubate.com slash camo uh, and then you can uh, download the app there. This is the icon for it. So this is what to look out for in the app store. App store. You can just go to the iOS app store and find it anyway or you can come here and download it. Uh, and then you'll also download the, uh, the desktop version. So if on the website, if I scroll down, you can see that they've got the uh, download for Mac OS here as well. So that's for the uh, the desktop version. Once you've done that, just plug them both together and then you are away. Uh, if you do want to go for the pro version, which uh, to be honest, I highly recommend <laughs> depending on your use case, it's just $40 or if you pay monthly, it's $5 a month or, or you can get a lifetime license for $80. So like I say, highly recommend it. It's been uh, great for me and uh, yeah, it's, it's a certainly a great way to unlock some of the power of your iPhone on your Mac. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And I'll leave a link to some other great app videos over on the right hand side. Uh, whoops, <laughs> pressed the wrong button then. And until the next time, I'll uh, catch you later and have a great day. Bye bye.